Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Apologies for the tatty shirt. Uh, we're doing some DIY around the house today. Um, Bonnerhaven, what a place. Um, gonna kick off by showing you what we're trying. This is the Feil or Feshiel, some of you are gonna tell me off for that, 2023 bottling for Bonnerhaven. It's one of two. Uh, the other one is quite expensive. I think it's like a 1988 or 89 vintage for about 450 pounds. This is the Canasta Cask maturation. 51.2% unpeated Bunnerhaven. Uh, it says limited release on the top. Not quite sure how many it is. Um, about 90 pounds a bottle. This is not my bottle. This was actually given to me, not given to me, but lent to me by a customer of mine. I had a friend too. Um, and he's like, I just bought this at, at Bunnerhaven with a, a lot of his friends. And he's like, do you want to review it? And I was like, absolutely. What's Canasta? And that led, that leads down a, a whole sort of sherry hole in itself. Um, essentially, Canasta is a type of cream sherry. Now, in order to make a cream sherry, you blend off dry sherry and sweet sherry together. Uh, off dry sherry like Olorosos, etc., are made using a Palmino grape or Palomino? 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 Palomino. Palomino grapes. And then you've got your really sweet ones, your Pedro Jimenez or your PX grapes. I'm pretty sure you don't blend them together at the start of it because that might be a little bit pointless, but you can just blend the two sherries together. These products have been blended together, they've been aged, and as a result, we now have a canasta sherry cask, which is quite fun. Uh, but essentially, it's a cream sherry. And Bunnerhaven have done some cream sherry stuff in the past. I keep putting emphasis on the C, cream. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just finally fun to have that available now. Because we talk about Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez so much. Occasionally we get Manzanillo, Ramondiado, Fino, all this kind of thing. Um, Sometimes Amoroso pops up every now and then too. And again, you'll get Moscatel, which isn't sherry, but it is sweet wine. Uh, but it's just nice to see Canasta put on the front of this. Bonnerhaven, famously unpeated Isla whiskey. They do make peated whiskey stock, but a lot of it is released as limited editions under the Moin uh, name. Or indeed, sometimes they have a regular release called the Tokiagar, which I'm definitely pronouncing wrong, but that is their peated version. And they also really produce a product called Stoysia, um, which typically is peated Bonnerhaven for independent bottlers. That's spelled S-T-A-O-I-S-H-A. Um, so if you ever see Stoysia on something, it's peated Bonnerhaven, but they just can't say Bonnerhaven on the front of it. Canasta barrels. Beautiful, normal colour. Apologies if you hear an ice cream van in the background. It's the first 20 degrees Celsius day of the year and... The children of Manchester need ice cream. There is no age statement on the front of this whiskey, or indeed on the back of it. In fact, anywhere, really. Just says, Fay Isle release. But Bonnerhaven, um, the last Bonnerhaven we reviewed, I think was the 18 year old, and it was quite a divided comment section. Some of you thought it was still an amazing whiskey, some of you thought it was becoming more expensive, some of you thought the batches weren't up to scratch as what they used to be. Bonnerhaven is one, or are one, of the distilleries where batching gets talked about a lot. Bonnerhaven, Glenfarclas, Glendronach, uh, Brocladdy, uh, with the exception of Port Charlotte and Octomore, but like just regular Brocladdy. Um, who else really? Abelauer, um, Edradauer. Um, batching's an issue. Creating a vatting of something's always gonna be quite difficult. Um, blending whiskey indeed is an art. But we've no idea how many casks of canasta maturation have gone into this. But to look at it is somewhat of a very typical sherry cast matured flavour. Uh, sherry cast matured colour rather. It's got this beautiful kind of burnt orange thing going on with it. And it has filled the room. I poured this about half an hour ago. And the room is just scented with some incredible like chocolate orange notes. And indeed to smell it up front. I say chocolate orange a lot. Whenever I, tr whenever I try sherry cast whiskies, I always tend to get chocolate orange flavours. Bonnerhaven in particular is a very chocolatey orange profile to me. The 12 in particular has always just had that dense, rich character to it. I'm saying chocolate orange with this, but what I mean is two very distinct, different things. One is cocoa powder, 
And I mean, when you open the tub of it to make yourself hot chocolate or something, it's that smell of kind of powdery, sugary, sweet chocolate. The other side of it is orange oil. So if you've ever made yourself an old fashioned cocktail or a Sazerac cocktail, anything that where you've kind of expressed citrus peel over the glass, this is like the most intense form of cocoa powder and chocolate orange, well, orange oil that I've ever come across. And even within it, we're getting these kind of peanutty, classic dry sherry notes. And this rather stunning, almost cognac-like smell to it. Like if you put this in front of me in a glass of like, what whatever XO cognac you'd want to say, it'd be quite difficult to tell them apart. Nutty, oaky, sweet, woody notes. And again, it's kind of showing off that blend of Palomino slash Oloroso, probably, and Pedro Jimenez, which is, you know, the Oloroso is the, the sorry, the Palomino grape variety is that nuttier, drier, fruitier. And then this PX side is that just over the top, indulgent, sticky chocolate. And from my experiences of very old Pedro Jimenez, when you get that in a glass at the end of a meal, or if you've got a bottle at home, a friend of mine bought me a 25 year old Pedro Jimenez sherry a couple of years ago. And I used to have it after um, just very sort of intense, like meaty meals, because it would not cleanse the palate, but it would just kind of cut through a lot of the density of like red meat. Um, it would always give me like banana and licorice notes. And you're getting this at the back here. Loads of just kind of sweet, overripe banana, banana bready sort of stuff. And then more earthy notes too. Despite Bonahav and Distillate typically being unpeated, this one does actually state it on the label. It, it still has like a, a torfer, earthy saltiness to it. And that comes through in this with licorice and a little bit of ginger as well. Maybe even like nutmeg. Bottled at 51.2%. Let's see what it tastes like. Whoa. I've been quite tight with the pour on this because it is not my bottle. But that is the kind of whiskey you want to sit down and study for quite a bit. Despite the fact it's unpeated and there's just these two classic sherry things put together. There's a lot going on with this. Texturally, it's so heavy. It was really difficult to try and express it up at all. It was just kind of sat here, like brooding and roaming around. Every single f smell I talked about on the nose, the cocoa powder, the orange oil, the peanut, those kind of almond yaki, old cognac flavors, they're all here. And they're all like, how do we put this? We've already used the word oil, oil and oily. But if you took the essences of those smells and flavors, and just kind of spritz them into the air, it's kind of like most sort of concentrated, cooked down form. That's what it's like. You pick up these beautiful, not too dry, but like sweet oak notes throughout all of it. And that feels like it's just layered in chocolate. There's a really nice biscuitiness to it. Um, and if any of this is particularly young whiskey, Whatever is young in it is just coming across as like digested biscuit, malty, sweet, creamy stuff. The top note of PX, like that, that's by far and away the most dominant thing. 
banana licorice, um, orange oil, milk chocolate, dates and prunes and all these kind of just really nice, sweet, sticky, lovely things. And then it's all kind of tempered by the Oloroso. It seems to pull back a little bit on the exuberance of PX and the intensity of the texture. And as you swallow the whiskey, it kind of to pull it all back. You get a little bit of dryness all across your tongue. And you're left with this kind of roasted nut, uh, hazelnut, peanut oil, slightly salty West Coast whiskey. Um, that's a good bit of fun in a glass, that. No matter what any of us might think about non-age stated festival releases, um, if you want to use the word money grabbing or anything like that, fine, feel free to. But if you get the opportunity to try this, even as a sample, I recommend you do because it is a good old bit of fun and it tastes distinctively different to higher strength Bonner Harbens, like the cash strength, for instance. Uh, but this is quite a, quite a bit off the cash strength. It's 51.2, whereas most cash strength, the two Bonner Harbin cash strength releases as 12 year olds, I think have been 58 and 57% ABV. It begins to touch that, but then you you got this more exciting, unusual sherry type. Very fun. Um, there are some other big festival release whiskies that I aim to review this year, but at the minute, that is one of the nicest I've tried in a while. Um, it's not a crazy score. I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half. Um, if it was 70 quid, probably would have bought one. I do think it is slightly too expensive. And for the innovative nature of declaring the sherry type. Innovative, powerful word, probably. But just for being honest with it, like saying, hey, it's this canasta sherry, it's slightly more unusual, um, cool. Would have been nice just to say, it's a seven year old, or it's an eight year old, or it's a vatting of stock between X and Y. Um, and even if they would have used vintages on it, would have been fine. Um, I'm nitpicking at this point, but it's a limited edition release. It's a high strength product. Probably should have that on there. Um, but overall, eight and a half out of 10, very tasty. If you like sherry, you're gonna love that. Um, but thank you to Ian, who lent me the bottle, and I will see you all next week in a less disheveled looking manner. Uh, but thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.